A good source of reference material is uh, to be found online, as you know. And I'm going to have a go at Glen Coe from a photograph. Um, I can't show you the photograph for obvious reasons, but I'm not going to do the, a similar one to the, to the photograph anyway. I'm going to do my own thing with it, as I always do. Uh, right, OK. Uh, Fabriano 130 pound paper and the Ron Ransom palette with one edition of uh, Burnt Sienna. You can make up whatever palette you like, whatever colours you like. But I've used these for, even in oil and acrylic painting, for 35 years. Ron Ransom designed the methods with the hake, the two inch hake, and th this colour palette, and uh, using the plastic tray, but he used a large plastic tray, and, I've, and you've seen me demonstrate using bits of it. But I just use this for the gouache colours, if I bother. Uh, I've had this tray for, well, since uh, Ron Ransom published his books all those years ago. Look, I used it for acrylic on the back. Um, I didn't use the tray, the actual business side of the tray. <coughs> I know Stephen Cronin, <laughs> his are in a bit of a state at the moment, all curled together with Salazar. Um But if he watches this, he, I got these two, well, I got two of these, from I think it was the dollshouse.com or also called the emporium.com. They weren't expensive, but it's trying to find uh, small quantities of these. You can buy 100 or 20, but you only want one or two. So I bought two, for, including postage, for about £6.50 when I got into this painting. A, method, a word about Stephen, I, if you watch my channel, I know many of you watch Stephen's as well, as do I. Uh, one of our mutual subscribers said, said in the week on a comment that uh, we're like father and son. Well, that's a compliment, but um, we both paint in totally different styles. I don't copy what he does. He doesn't copy what I do, although you're free to copy either of us, of course. Uh, we just, I, I find him an inspiration, so I'm going to wet the paper, but the method I use isn't Stephen Cronin's method, it's the Ron Ransom method, which he uses, and which uh, credit to. The, the one thing I did get off Stephen was this paper, the Fabriana, £130, great paper for wetting wet, it's cheap, and as it dries, it takes a dry brush very, very well. Well, there we are, so not too much. I'm painting at about mm, 30 to 35 degrees. Uh, I'm using a box easel that I bought for 20 pounds at the Art in Action exhibition in July near Oxfordshire. If you get a chance to, to see it next year, it's, it's a marvellous day out, absolutely marvellous. You think, how, how can you spend a day going around these marquees? But once you've gone around once, you want to go around again. There were two demonstrators showing glass blowing. There were demonstrations in um, silkscreen printing, wood turning on primitive equipment. Um, electricity free, should I say. Uh, sculpture, figurehead carving for mastheads. Mastheads? For the front of the ships, anyway. The, boat, the old boats, sailing boats. Carpentry, boat carpentry, oh, superb. And David Curtis was demonstrating there, as was, um, um, I can't remember the name now. Used to be in Castle Walton Wellington Art Group with, well, years ago, I've known him for a long time. And a thoroughly good day. Right, so Glencoe. I'm going to put a bit of a, a, a brooding dark sky, so a bit of, let's have a bit of, a bit of burnt sienna, no, sorry, alizarin, no water in this, just a cool colours going to very warm foreground colours that suggest the uh, sun shining through the clouds. So, Payne's grey, ultramarine, alizarin crimson, for the uh, 
the sky and it's quite dark. Okay, so let's just get these. We're getting a bit darker. So this is those three colours. Just tumbling down the over the two the high peaks here. Okay. Right, so I'll put in some burnt sienna in, in with that. I love burnt sienna for dark, so let's just get a nice good good rich dark in it. Go for it. And then we've got a big peak coming up here. Number in there as well. And lots of peaks and things with another one in here. I've got a Carve a bit of snow out of this, some of this, and then come up here to a slightly more distant one. Go up further up now. Come down to the uh, pass coming through here. Let's get some other colours in there now. Some uh, burnt sienna with a bit of burnt sienna and raw sienna. Just a slight warming of some of this. Nice bit of light raw sienna in here. Then the distance. Just try to bring all that together now. Now I'm going to pick out lots of, of um, darks in with this. Dark brown in here. And got some green, nice greens going up here. Just re the paper. Um, 
there's some nice lemon yellowy or warm yellow coming over here. Okay. Right, I'll just uh, before I do any more, I just want to put a bit of a snow there. That's about it really for the snow. I'm going to have to go back in that, I've just gone a little bit far. Now, I want to put some dark blue. I'm, I'm painting almost tube consistency here. You don't have to paint as thick as this, but I'm doing it because if you put wet paint on wet paint, it just goes to nothing. So that's why I want to be blue. Right, there's dark here on this shadow side of this. And then in here, get the blue in. So we've got this nice umbery colour in here there. And it's going across here, it's coming down. And then we'll get some burnt sienna now and go into this area here. Let's just reclip it. You don't have to paint as thick as this, I, I'm just getting carried away just enjoying the thickness of this paint. So, Bit of green, join that together, and a nice rich green somewhere here. I've wrecked my palette. Right, let's get some darks back in here. Sort of gauze. Now we'll come into the lighter colours in this foreground. Uh, bit of blue in with the yellow, get a nice rich green, richer than that. Sort of this coming through here. This is just like a uh, 
can I say, sort of a scrubby bush. And that goes all over umber. Bit of burnt sienna in there. It's all over this. Showing the way into the par pass. So some rocks I'm going to put in, in here. So now back to the yellow. Oh, my phone's going non-stop today. Got some green in there. Alone on the phone, I can't stop. I'm phoning back. Excuse me. I'll phone back when I finish this video. Stupid. Sorry about that. Right, so. Put in some some dark foreground, had some dark greens and a little bit of paint grey, so that I can etch out some some rocks. And you need to put some rich colours in to do that. A lot of green. Right, okay, let's uh, scrape that out. Get the rock card. Okay, so that. That would be for our rocks. We'll put a few more in, in here. Which don't really exist in the photograph, but this is just just a bit of texture. A bit of artistic license here, just because there's no no trees, no sort of high spots. Right, so I'll put a bit, a bit of dark shadow in there. Let's mm. clean that brush. I use a great big pot of water. Just a bit of palette green, dark green. Paint a bit of dark around these rocks here. Okay, we're getting there. <coughs> so we'll just put a bit of this green coming across and along here, showing different ridges, different planes. The shapes of the, of the ground. I'm guessing a lot of this really. I'm just making a painting out of it rather than a copy. And Um, that needs to be a little bit more detailed, so I'll put some
Very windy. Okay, I want to just put a bit of a Filling that because that's lovely and burnt sienna ish. <coughs> um, okay, right now I'm going to give it a bit of scale. I'm going to put a couple of figures in there. Although I can't see a path, that doesn't mean to say one isn't there because whoever took the photograph was there, I see landed by helicopter. So it's just an exercise of painting Scottish landscape really. So let's, um, where should we go? Uh, go in here. Okay, they're probably too big, uh, but I'm going to let it go. No, I'm not. I'm going to take them out because I think they're just too, too far away to be that big. And I haven't drunk my cup of tea. Uh, let's just take them out and uh, put them back. Excuse me, I'm drink my tea. So we'll put them here. Okay, that's it. Well, I'll put a signature on it. See it's really going thing. Right, we'll put a Scottish Eagle or two. Right, let's uh, see what it looks like in a mount. It's only an impression of Glencoe from the photograph. You can't look at it yet. Might not be worth looking at. Okay, well there we are, Glencoe. <coughs> I think I could have I think I've gone a bit too dark on the, the background, but there's a lot of contrast in, 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 in this. Um, let's bring you around a bit. We'll have a, have a look at the old overall thing. Um, I don't know. Let's zoom in. Let's go to the top of these peaks. 
I was too close, I was a bit stupid there. Alright, let's go across to the, near the rocks. And there's little figures, just to give it some scale. I don't know, I think that might be okay. But I think I've gone too heavy really. But it was it was good fun. Let's see if I can just scrape out a little bit. I don't like that second bird I put in there. Right, let's just, let's just scrape that. Just loosen it off a little bit. Okay, well, I'll let that go. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.